A very little-known industry in the economy is packaging. Just about every good manufactured in the world comes in some sort of packaging. It is this basic need of manufacturers that makes Bemis Company, Inc. BMS a potentially intriguing company. With 35 years of consecutive dividend increases, we take a look inside the company and determine what it has to offer for investors moving forward. Source Bemis Company Bemis Company is a manufacturer and distributor of packaging solutions for various industries ranging from consumer goods, to food, to pharmaceuticals and more. The company generates annual revenues of approximately $4 billion while employing 16,000 employees across 56 facilities in 12 countries across the world. Source Bemis Company The revenue pie is split up into three categories, with the United States sitting at about 65% of revenues. About 17% comes from Latin America, with the rest spread across Europe, the Asia-Pacific region, and a chunk classified as healthcare revenues. The healthcare segment speaks for Bemis Company's medical device and pharmaceutical customer base. Cash flows. Or lack thereof. I have to admit, before my analysis of Bemis Company, I didn't know much about the business model. The business concept is interesting, but that doesn't always translate to being a profitable investment. I always start by looking at a company's profitability. I want to know that a company I am investing in is generating a lot of cash flows. These cash flows can then be used to reinvest back into the company for growth, or to buy back shares, or distribute as dividends. Source, why charts I typically look for a level of FCF conversion of 10% or higher. As we can see, Bemis has consistently fallen short of that mark. When we look at revenues over the past decade and see a stagnant top line, the lack of high profitability has caused FCF to drift over the same time period as a result. Source, why charts I find that the lack of profitability comes from two main variables. The first being that a majority of revenues are derived in the United States, where there is a mass portfolio of high-profile customers. Source Bemis Company These are no doubt high-dollar customers for Bemis, where pricing is a constant battle. These large customers bring a lot of leverage to the table in a highly competitive environment. Kraft Heinz KHC alone is approximately 10% of sales for Bemis Company, per the 2017 annual report. The other variable is cost of innovation. There is required investment into innovation on a number of fronts. Not only does Bemis need to be at a technological front in regards to product performance, maximizing shelf life of packaged foods for example, but also the company needs to maintain updated equipment where possible as faster, higher volume, and lower cost manufacturing technology becomes available. This is key to remaining competitive in the industry. Dividend Outlook Bemis Company has been able to maintain dividend growth in a low cash flow environment by maintaining a pretty conservative dividend growth policy. The dividend pays out 31 cents per share every three months for a total annual payout of $1.24 per share. This results in a yield of approximately 2.72% on the current share price. The yield isn't bad, but less than what 10-year treasuries are currently offering from an income perspective. Source, Y charts, we can see that the dividend has been slotted into a slow growth rate of 3.6% CAGR over the past decade. This is because the dividend consumes a high portion of free cash flows. When the cash payout is this high, it not only limits the room for dividend growth but also strips financial flexibility away from the company. Having a high cash payout isn't always a sign of trouble, but in order to determine whether it is or not, we need to look at the balance sheet. Source, why charts debt has consistently been an issue for Bemis. I typically look for as little debt as possible in the companies I invest in, obviously, but I don't typically raise any eyebrows as long as the company isn't leveraged to more than 2.5x EBITDA. As we can see, the company has leveraged itself well in excess of that mark in recent years. 
This is a warning sign to me, as the company's $1.5 billion in debt is more than a third of its market cap. This debt will become even more burdensome in an environment that is seeing interest rates continually rise. The debt is a huge problem, and with the dividend taking up 70% of FCF for a company that doesn't generate a ton of cash, Bemis is faced with a large debt hole and a small cash shovel to fill it. Growth Opportunities In order to succeed, the company is going to need to find some meaningful growth in its cash flows. This can happen either through margin expansion or top-line growth. Because of the highly competitive nature of the business, and handful of high-dollar, high-leverage customers, I don't see a lot of margin expansion upside in Bemis. The only impactful action I can see are cost cuts, which Bemis has already initiated. Source Bemis company with more than 82% of revenues generated in the US and Latin America, the company faces expansion opportunity in the rest of the world. The company has a manufacturing presence in Europe, Asia, and Australia. The opportunity is also a challenge, because Bemis has roots in the US where its story, brand, and reputation mean more, founded in 1858. In other markets, Bemis is an outsider competing for business that other companies are already providing for. The overall market for flexible packaging is expected to grow at approximately 3% per annum, so the top line should see modest growth even if Bemis is unable to take market share. To really change the financial outlook of Bemis however, taking market share will be important. This is a tall task for Bemis company. Further risk to the business is included in its existing client base. With huge companies such as Kraft purchasing from Bemis, the loss of such a large customer would be damaging to Bemis company's top and bottom lines. Valuation after a recent earnings pop, shares are trading near $45 per share. They are now near a midpoint between 52-week highs and lows. Source, why charts management is guiding that earnings will come in between $2.75 and $2.85 per share for the year. This places the stock at an earnings multiple of just under 17x earnings. This is a nice discount to the 10-year median valuation of 20x earnings. This is partially due to an earnings pop, thanks in part to an 880 basis point reduction in its year-over-year -year tax rate. The dividend's current yield of 2.72% on shares is actually right in line with the decade median yield of 2.80%. A big valuation component for me is yield on cash flows. Because cash ultimately drives a company, I want to invest or receive as much cash per dollar invested as I can. There are really two ways the yield can be impacted. Either a company can generate very strong cash flows and essentially outrun the share price causing a higher yield or the company can underperform and offer a subpar value on the stock relative to cash generation. Source, why charts as we can see, the yield on cash flow has varied greatly over time. I typically strive for a yield near 10%, and back in 2016 the stock almost yielded 8% on cash flow. Unfortunately the yield has trended lower since then. We have reviewed the shortcomings of Bemis company from a cash perspective, which implies that this 4% yield is a reflection of poor value in the price of shares. Wrapping up I have a difficult time arriving at a target price for Bemis company, because I don't find the stock to be an appealing place to put my money in the first place. The company doesn't generate much cash flow. Meanwhile, the dividend is stuck in a low growth trajectory because of a high cash payout ratio. The balance sheet is over leveraged, which gives me concern about the long-term viability of the dividend itself. Being a dividend champion doesn't always mean that the stock has a great outlook for the future. Bemis Company is solid enough financially that it will continue its current path for a while. It has strong market presence in the US, and a strong stable of customers. Unfortunately the business itself isn't very profitable, and the current path it is on is mediocre. 
there are better places to put your money. Disclosure, I, we have no positions in any stocks mentioned, and no plans to initiate any positions within the next 72 hours. I wrote this article myself, and it expresses my own opinions. I am not receiving compensation for it other than from Seeking Alpha. I have no business relationship with any company whose stock is mentioned in this article.